Welcome to the world of Carry On. In this series, we're going to take a look behind the scenes at how some of the greatest Carry On films were ever made. This time, we look at the last most popular Carry On as the team descend for the holiday of a laugh time. But who would be providing the laughs? Sidney James as Vic Flange. Kenneth Williams as Stuart Farquhar. Charles Hawtrey as Eustace Tuttle. Joan Sims as Cora Flange. Bernard Breslaw as Brother Bernard. Barbara Windsor as Sadie Tompkins. Kenneth Connor as Stanley Blunt. Peter Butterworth as Pepe. Jimmy Logan as Burt Conway. June Whitfield as Evelyn Blunt. And Hallie Jakes as Floella. Although much play was made on the package holiday plot for Carry On Abroad, the budget was as tight as ever. No far-flung location filming was called for, as June Whitfield remembers, she was thinking that she was going to go off to sunny Europe and the filming would be absolutely wonderful, it would be hot, but alas, the car park at Pinewood would be the actual setting for Elle's Bells. In addition to that, a newly built K and J stage was used extensively during this filming where the village set was on the back lot of the actual studio. And with one day's filming, just taking them just out of side Pinewood to sunny old Slough, the high street would dub up as the Wonder Tours office. On the last day of filming, more location work was done. This time, as the cast and crew was transported to Gatwick Airport and around the dusty roads in Bagshot. Indeed, this would be Charles Hawtrey's final day on the film and the series. Whilst Peter Rogers was keeping very tight hold of them purse strings, some scenes, including one notable scene between Sid James, Joan Sims and Jimmy Logan, was drastically cut just prior to filming them. Also, other scenes with holiday makers and actress Lindsay March were cut just before filming due to these drastic budget cuts. In particular, Bill Maynard would be one that would suffer quite badly from one of these cuts. Since joining the series in Carol Lovin' in 1970, he had enjoyed many supporting roles in all the films. In Carry On Abroad, he would play Mr. Fiddler, the lecherous owner of Wonder Tours. However, despite the scenes which Kenneth Williams, Patsy Rowlands and Carol newcomer Gal Granger were all involved in, sadly, due to overrunning on the final print, Bill's entire performance ended on the cutting room floor. Although Carry On Abroad was the first in a long line of carry-ons where production would come to one film a year before coming to a halt in 1978, the production company, Rank Organisation, was still very hard at work with Peter Rogers. In July of 1972, Gerald Thomas and Peter Rogers began work on the feature film version of the sitcom Bless This House. Carry On Abroad stars Sid James, Peter Butterworth, June Whitfield, Carol Hawkins and Sally Geeson were all retained for this project and Robin Asquith was brought in to play Mike. He would then go later on to appear in Carry On Girls a year later. Although the Carry On franchise had hit a purple patch at home in Britain, some parts of the world still didn't equate the familiar cast with a familiar brand name. In Germany, for example, the film was retitled A Mad Holiday, and it's probably certain that the Germanic audiences probably missed the subtle gag on the credits, where identified as the technical advisor was Suntan Lotion. Didn't notice it? Have a look now. Get your DVD out and put it on. Anyway, let's take a look at the film. The film opens with pub landlord Vic Flange openly flirting with Sadie Tompkins in front of his battle axe wife, Cora. Vic has booked to go away with Sadie to the island of Eld's Bells. However, Cora is no wiser until Harry pops in and lets the cat out of the bag. Suddenly, her fear of flying has suddenly vanished and she decides to accompany her husband on this weekend away to Eld's Bells, leading Sadie to go away on her own. The next day at the Wonder Tours office, Stuart Farquhar and his lovely assistant, Moira, see the passengers all aboard the coach, ready to fly off to Els Bells. However, upon their arrival, they discover that the hotel is only half finished. The builders have just quietly, suddenly, for unexpected reasons, leave five floors without even any rooms or any furnishings as whatsoever. However, the distraught manager, Pepe, decides to run the place even though he knows it's half finished. 
In a bid to make it successful, he disguises himself as the manager, the doorman and the porter. Whilst the cooking is left to his ill-fated wife, Floella, who battled repeatedly with the cork stove oven. As the guests prepare to settle, they get a few surprises along the way, as every little thing that can go possibly wrong with a hotel goes wrong. Wardrobes don't have any backs, sand pours out of taps, and the lavatory seems to overflush. Despite these few problems, Vic decides to go for a shower, and ultimately at the same time, Sadie's having one. Whilst having a friendly chat, Cora catches them at it. Whilst they're not on great speaking terms, dinner on the first night is foul and unpleasant due to burning smoke from the kitchen. The motley crew of hotel makers decide to open the windows. However, this wasn't such a good idea as the arrival of Moscuyos seems to be biting them. Marge, however, has taken a shine to brother Bernard and they develop a sort of innocent romance. Whilst Lily lures the dashing Nicholas away from his jealous partner, Robin. However, Stanley attempts to seduce Cora whilst his nagging wife is not present. But Cora is more interested in keeping Vic away from Sadie, who grows fond of Bert. Vic tries to put Bert off Sadie by telling him that she is a black widow who murdered her two previous husbands, who were both in fact firemen and died on the job. The next day, they're all off for an excursion trip to the local market. Vic, however, discovers a local drink, St. Celia's Elixir, which turns drinking into x-ray vision, and you can see women with no clothing on. However, this gets them into a bit of trouble when they decide to visit Madame Fifi's kind of boarding house, and a fight ensures, leaving them getting arrested and put in jail. They are let go by Maura Plonkett's seductiveness as she takes the secret chief of police away for a little bit of, well, you know what. With their release insured, it's back to the hotel and a party has been laid on by Monsieur Pepe to let them celebrate the last night of fun. The drinks are being spiked with St. Celia's elixir and everyone's really having a good time with that. But as the rain pours down, the hotel has been built on a dry riverbed and the hotel decides to fall down. Whilst the holidaymakers carry on and enjoy their night, unaware of what's going on around them, Monsieur Pepe is having a nightmare. Back home, and there's an Els Bells reunion at Vic and Cora's pub. Stuart Farquhar is now working behind the bar due to him losing his job. The last scene goes to Mr. Tuttle locking the door. To confirm a lock-in, we'll have the party swinging. Carry On Abroad was released in the cinemas on the 15th of December 1972. At the cinema, it done quite well. The critics found it favourable, the usual Carry On cock up as they classed it. However, with the half built hotel, it's not surprising it was a bit of a cock up. But this film was the last decent Carry On film in the series. The last time we would see all the cast assembled together for the last time. Many of the films that followed this one was not on the same level as Carry On Broad and the glory days of Carry Ons had finally slipped away. We were now resorting to innuendo and very very smutty gags. We were losing cast members by the dozen. After Carry On Broad, the Carry Ons really weren't the same again. They still held up fairly well in the cinema and with the audiences for a couple more years. But the once remembered great Carry Ons was no more. Karen Abroad is the film that gets the fans excited because it is funny, it is hilarious, it does have a big cast and it does get ranked quite favourably with the fans. There's nothing really wrong with Carry On Abroad, it has everything a Carry On should have and really sits up there with the greats such as Camping, Doctor, At Your Convenience, Up The Kyber and Screaming. And whilst it was the holiday of a lifetime for us fans, we still had a few more years before the series finally ended where we could actually still have some laughs at the team's expense, even though it wasn't that great. However, until next time, don't forget to carry on laughing.